here fighting to protect the sacredness of Mother Earth. Can I hear some noise? A few hundred gathered in Vancouver to do something they've been doing for months, protesting the Trans Mountain Pipeline. But tonight, much of their anger is directed at the federal government. This will be uh, go down in history as a very bad move, for, especially for the Liberal Party. They, they will have lost BC. The fact that Trudeau is supporting it now does not mean that we're going to back down. It's actually the other way around. We're going to keep our fight and it's going to get more intensified. Across Burrard Inlet lies Tsleil-Waututh Nation. It's fighting the pipeline in court and officials say they'll continue to do that even though it's the federal government that's now building the pipeline. It's ridiculous because they're, they're supposed to be looking out for the best interest of Canada and our future generations. <laughs> BC's Lower Mainland remains the key battleground when it comes to this project. There are concerns about an increase of tanker traffic and what impact a spill could have on the province's coast. Many are irate that the government is financially supporting an oil pipeline and Canada has said it wants to be a leader when it comes to the environment. Even if it was a good investment financially, it's never a good investment to violate Indigenous people's rights and fuel climate change. But just over 100 kilometres to the east on Chiam First Nation, there's a much different attitude when it comes to this project and the government's commitment to it. So it comes right through our traditional territory. Chief Ernie animal Cray animal signed a lucrative benefit agreement so with Kinder Morgan, which he says will now be honoured by the federal government. On top of that, he says, band members will be employed in building the pipeline. I hate to think of, of what would have happened if... Um, Kinder Morgan went away and there was no plan to make sure this pipeline is built. It would have impacted this community in a profound way. Recent polls found that more people in BC support the project than are opposed to it, but the numbers aren't overwhelming. Two polls peg support at about 55%, which means this province is still very much divided over this pipeline. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Vancouver. So what could throw a wrench in potential construction? Well, Breyer mentioned there that several First Nations say they weren't adequately consulted as required by the Canadian Constitution. A decision is expected any time now from the Federal Court of Appeal. And if the judges rule in their favour, it could send the pipeline, or parts of it anyway, back for assessment, more consultation, a move that would cause lengthy delays. As for the B.C. government's legal question on if it has the right to put restrictions on moving diluted bitumen through the province... Well, there's no timing on how long the province's top court may take to schedule a hearing, let alone release a decision.